Hello, and welcome to this episode of the official podcast. It's the podcast where we will most likely talk about the Mario movie and how there's nothing to talk about about it. Ooh. Did you did you did like you? it, Andrew? I did. It's just, if if someone came up to me and said, hey man, make a Mario movie where everything is directed by a studio or board of directors, yeah. Tell me what would be in it. And this was from start to finish exactly what a board created group tank Mario movie was. But that's that is that better than like an offensively bad Mario movie where they don't understand what Mario is? I don't know because for the market, yes, it's making a shitload of money and overall it's uh -huh. very popular and I I enjoyed it. It was a fine watch. It's but, fun. But if you compare it to say for example the the like 80s Mario movie, the live action one, which was just a confusing, awful mess. That one is just far more entertaining as a product. You know what I mean? I, well, that's a, that's a bit of a wild take there. I don't know about <laughs> I that. Haven't seen yeah. it. Be, I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying that the fact that it exists is far more interesting than this movie. Well, uh, it existed. It, it only, it wasn't like a decision really. It, it only existed in that capacity because it's all they could do. Like they couldn't do animation the way that they are currently doing it. So they could have done a, TD, a really? 2D animated movie just fine. What are you talking about? Well, that would have been that probably would have been more expensive, right? Not, not. I, I, I like it. That's not I, the haven't, point. I haven't seen I haven't seen the eighties Mario movie, so I'm not going to talk out of my ass. But I thought it was like somewhat low budget. Is that not correct? No, it's really not. It's it was very, also the nineties. Uh, I'm pretty sure nineties. It, it's yeah. not important when it came out. It's the not. point. The point is that the current Mario movie is paint by numbers from start to finish. If you have not seen it, everything you expect to happen happens. Every cliche of writing, every way the characters are written, the the trailers, for example, give away like half the movie, just straight no, up. I don't I don't even feel like there's really writing in it. It's yeah, just yeah. events. No, it, it just happens. It just is. Yeah. Whereas the 90s, 80s, whenever it came out, live action Mario movie, if you sat down in the 90s and said, write a movie about Super Mario, there, there's a very small chance you would come up with what they came up with because it's fucking lunacy from start to finish. I it's not a what better happens. movie, not at all, but... It's interesting that it was made. It's it's a very strange product. Whereas this movie, the new one, is just it just is. You know, it's, it's just there. Well, that, there it that's, is. That's what you want, though. You want a movie that's based on a game to be exactly what you'd want yeah. from the game, right? Like if they it's made a Batman movie. movie that was all about clogging, like I don't think you'd be super happy with yeah. that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm clogging. not at all saying it's a bad movie. It's like tap dancing, but cooler, I guess. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not at all saying it was a bad movie. What I'm saying is in, in 30, 40, 50 years, when we're looking back on movies, right, and people are talking about movies of the past, when people talk about the new Mario movie, they're going to go, yep, that's it. That's the Mario movie. Cool. Whereas when they talk about the old one, they're going to go, what the fuck is this? What, look at this thing. Look at this. Yeah, but they're still not going to call it a good movie, either one and of them. And I'm not either. Like I never years from now, are you going to... Talk about the Minions movie, it just exists as a cash grab from kids. It's not really meant to be a piece of art. At no point in this out. conversation did I say the old movie is good. I said it's more interesting, which I uh -huh. think is true. I guess. Yeah. There's nothing like it. That really isn't. Whereas the new Mario movie, there's a thousand animated movies like it. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I agree. I feel like the movie was, like, inoffensive. It was, mm -hmm. like, a pretty bog standard children's movie which is kind of what you should expect from something like this i guess i kind of wanted more of a like a sonic spin with a bit more substance to it but like at the end of the day it's a children's movie so you can't be too critical about it sonic spin it, that's a that's a good pun it is it is kind of nuts that i like i was hoping for more sonic than <laughs> what i got but whatever so the way the way that i came out of the theater is I don't know whether I liked the Sonic or Mario movie more. Probably Mario. But the difference is the Mario movie was flat. It was a straight line from start to finish. There was no moment that really got me super invested, super entertained, whatever. Whereas with Sonic, 
it was a sine wave. You'd be going up and up and up and up with Jim Carrey scenes. Like, oh, he's fucking killing it as Robotnik, and this is interesting, and these robot designs are fun and whatever. But then Sonic would start flossing or just doing, like, unfunny things, and it would be going down and down and down. And then it'd start coming back up because the plot would be, like, interesting. Here's, here's a great example of just those two movies. The plot of the Mario movie is exactly what you would expect. Bowser wants to kidnap and marry Peach, and Mario goes to the Mushroom Kingdom and gets power-ups. The Sonic movie is he has an owl that's his mom and uses rings to go time traveling, or sorry, dimension traveling, and then he stays with a human family because he was originally living in a baseball field and generating sonic booms from running too fast, and then he's caught by the police, and it, it, it's like, it's, it's more of an idea, you know what I mean? More of taking mm -hmm. the character and creating an original property instead of the Mario movie where, yeah, the beginning is more original, where they have a whole Italian family and live in a cramped apartment, et cetera, et cetera. But after that, it's just like the whole last half of the movie is just totally in universe. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I didn't enjoy it that much, really. I was pretty bored throughout it. So Charlie said you hated it. Uh, is that accurate? I, I think I think hate's a strong word. Um, like I totally understand why people would like it and do like it. And I understand that it's intended for children or grown up children who like Mario as well, like, su like super passionately. Um, but yeah, I just didn't find much there for me. Cause I'm not like a Mario like fan, I guess mm. there was, I, I understood the references and stuff. Um, but yeah, <laughs> nothing like made me feel it i guess hey so, that's a goomba <laughs> jackson clapped yeah. when he saw the goomba he cheered yeah coming coming out of the cinema i was a bit more hot about it but it's really hard to critique movies like that or care too passionately about mm -hmm. movies like that because they're just children movies at the end so of the there, day so there are two things i can openly critique it about like i enjoyed it i thought overall it was fine but there are two things i hated about the movie Number one, Seth Rogen's laugh. He did it like four fucking times. And it's just not just... liking Seth Rogen in general, though. Like, I don't like <laughs> Seth Rogen either, but I don't think he, like, ruined it with his laugh, to be fair. But they explicitly put it in the movie and had DK animating that laugh. Yeah, he could have just not done it. True. I, I, yeah. I'm no Seth Rogen fan, so you'll get no and, real uh, argument the second from me there. one. So the second one, Charlie, I think you'll actually agree with. The licensed music was a terrible yeah. choice. Oh, I said yeah. that. I oh my, yeah. I'm so fucking tired of every single movie and show ever having a Beastie Boys moment. I don't yep. get it. Every yep. single movie has a Beastie and Boys moment. And it's really disappointing, too, because the original music for the movie is very good. Yeah, it it's is. It's giant orchestral renditions of Mario and Mario Kart music, and it's really, really well done and fits the scenes, and it's just... A joy to listen to. The end credits is a medley of all the regular Mario themes done in a big orchestral style, and it was fucking great. But then they get to the DK Island, and I got excited. I literally got excited for one yes, of the few times in the movie. Point as well, yeah. They got yeah, to the yeah. DK Island, and I think, oh my god, Donkey Kong Country music. Holy shit, they're gonna do that on a big orchestral scale. I love that soundtrack. And what do they do? They play Take AHA's on Take On Me. Yeah, no, I was like, and what the fuck does this have to do with sucked. anything? <laughs> what does this have to do? I, I think fucking... Please, oh. we're at. Yeah, hold on, though. Let's talk about the Thunderstruck moment, because oh, that was fucking egregious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what moment was that? I don't remember. <laughs> it's, uh, it's You don't remember when he's like, he puts like the hat on and everything, and it's playing Thunderstruck and shit? No. Yeah. See, this is what I mean. There's nothing is there for me to latch on to. God, there's there's a scene in the fucking movie where they're all on the Rainbow Road and having a giant Mario Kart brawl. And that was my favorite scene in the movie. That was actually pretty good. And the whole time I kept thinking, it, earlier in the movie, there's a metal Koopa band. It's a band of Koopas and they play heavy metal at Bowser's party. And I kept thinking, what if... They just cut to, like, heavy metal renditions of Mario songs, like Mad Max, but Mario. How amazing of a scene would that be? And then, nah, it just didn't happen. Uh, even they... even more original um, Bowser songs would have been cool. Just something. Mm -hmm. It felt like every single song was, like, a licensed song that I had heard a hundred times before in other movies as well. 
They just needed more Beastie Boys, honestly. They used No Sleep Till Brooklyn, <laughs> but totally forgot about Sabotage, the other oh, staple. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Intergalactic, planetary, planetary, intergalactic. Could have been during Rainbow Road. There's just a thousand ones. Yeah, what is the song? Missed opportunity. What was the song that played during the training montage moment where where uh, Mario is running the course over and over again? Was there a song during oh, that? Oh, that bit? was holding out for a hero. The most cliche yeah, training montage been in every song of all time. Every fucking movie this last year. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> me. It's insane it's how right. often I hear that now. Well, it was, they were also like, super jarring. You don't know. They were also no, super, it. super duper jarring because you'd have giant orchestra and then cut to just these basic '80s pop songs. Just back yeah, and it forth. Just, it really felt out of place to me. Like it would mm -hmm. every time it happened, I'd be like, "Why is this playing right now?" Hey, this Jackson, doesn't make sense. You like fan service, right? <laughs> so you like you like all the Easter eggs, and some of them were pretty clever and fun. But did you like when they go to the Mario Kart fucking place? And Cranky Kong literally explicitly says, select your carts! And they use the same UI from Mario Kart 8, including the A button. It's <laughs> the most blatant reference on the planet that lasts like five minutes. That's fine, That's fine. though. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I know. It was fine. It was just so... I'm just you surprised know how blatant if they, they didn't went. Overload, if they didn't overload that shit in the movie, people would be complaining that it wasn't... Um, true, you true. Know, honest to the to the franchise or whatever. I, I gotta stress, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm just pointing things out that I noticed. <laughs> sounds you. like you are, and <laughs> I'm the one that hates it. Apparently, you can critique something and still enjoy it. You can still I think point thing, out things. Yeah, but I think one thing that is very valid criticism of us when we like something, we are mm -hmm. the most critical of it. Like our entire true. John Wick yeah. Four conversation was actually just shitting <laughs> on it for the like 30 minutes, even though true. all of us love that, that movie. Yeah, no, I, like I um I got some <laughs> clapback on Twitter for that from people. Who who are like, wow, Andrew had a terrible take of John Wick 4. He had a stupid take. People don't realize I liked it. I'd give it like an 8 out of 10. I, I just talk about the issues I have with it because I was sitting there for an hour going, oh, and then the part when he shot the guy was really cool. And I like when he got that guy and then he hit that guy and that was cool. And the lighting was cool. That's not interesting. That's not well, a conversation. I, I think most people already agree on what the good parts are. Yeah. There was really not much of a need to go over and over what we thought was awesome there's just a few couple right. little uh you know concerns i people guess people like listening to positive things though well let's let's sometimes, flip the sometimes script the... do they want us what? to be one of those fucking annoying fanboy podcasts where we spend the next hour going whoa the mario movie was so cool do you remember <laughs> when he hit the fucking block and the fire flower came out that was sick that was the best yeah, thing i've do. ever seen Probably. all year that's, that's some feel-good shit i like when people are yeah. excited to be fair <laughs> You're like the you're one of the most critical people I know. Yeah, yeah that's true. I, but I'm still just saying, like, I still think we that's absolutely fun when probably are happy. get it from you. You we've like siphoned it off. No you. shot with like John I, Wick. With John Wick, I had to keep like defending it. Like, no, no, yeah. wait. Like, it's it's no, good. Sure. Like, it's good. I have my own opinions, Jackson. I don't know about you. <laughs> no, I farm them from others. <laughs> I don't know. I think we have a healthy balance. I think maybe sometimes you overanalyze children's no, movies. No, we don't. Well, we overanalyze every movie, I think. But still. I don't know. There, there no, were some we are, silly we moments in John Wick that just didn't make sense. negative, 10% positive. Mm, I yeah, disagree. Yeah, plenty. I mean, it's, it's, you, can you can disagree, but it's factual. People have counted. Some <laughs> will go back and count all 330 ep episodes and pinpoint the percentage of negative to positive thoughts it's going to come out to be overwhelmingly negative, negative yeah, for <laughs> sure it probably won't even be close i think andrew's right though it's just because criticisms are more interesting there's more room yeah for discussion there's, there's more criticism. of a discussion when you have criticism than when you just praise something because praising yeah. can only go so far no i agree you know? it's just, it's, it's like when we like something we still almost say nothing good about it to be fair <laughs> <laughs> well go on you gave you gave mario an 80 percent uh yeah i really go, go I, ahead i thought it really captured the spirit of the games like a game come to life no one plays mario for the story at all literally yeah. zero people in the world so i didn't think it needed writing in fact i preferred that it didn't have like characters with like really in-depth fleshed out motivations Isn't or anything that, like, like the that point, anyway very the movie, simple. Just have it, have the video game just mapped to a movie screen. I don't exactly. need like fancy that, I feel the like Godfather adaptation. Just yeah, the, show yeah, me the like Mario Kart it. selection screen. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, that's cool yeah. if you're a kid. Oh, yeah. even even when you're 28 years old, it's still cool to see Mario come to life and have fun with it. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you I had can, fun, I you can had get fun. along with that. I, I'll agree that there were a lot of like Easter eggs that you know got to me, got me, got me a little tingle, a little ooh. That and that was the most fun I had with the movie, just looking in the background the whole time and trying to find stuff. That I it's very clear that they they put a lot of passion into bringing Mario to life. If nothing else, mm -hmm. it wasn't just like yeah, uh, this like the most. It, it is a very generic movie, but it wasn't like they it, did it. the laziest work possible for did it. What's his yeah, face no, live up to no. the name? Did Chris Bratz live up to the Mario? He, he was actually fine. Yeah, uh, the trailers did him a real disservice, but he was actually fine in the movie. So that uh, that line in the trailer that everyone had a hoopla over, myself included, where he goes, "Mushroom Kingdom, here we come." That's actually not in the movie at all. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't even there. I don't think so. No, they they literally just did him dirty with those yeah. <laughs> with those trailers. It looked so fucking. So shit. maybe they just used an old take that they just used for fucking trailers. Very possible. Trailers are edited by different studios than the people who make the actual yeah, editing movie. houses. Yeah. So yeah, and it actually kind of plays into that too. So spoilers for the first five minutes of the Mario movie. Um, we'll spoilers. What? I said, what spoilers? <laughs> it's a fucking... Yeah, it's the Mario movie. I mean, that's the joke I was making, yeah. Um, they yeah. reveal that those Italian Mario voices, like, let's go, mamma mia, are part of a commercial for their business, and beyond that, they just talk like normal people. So, like, they're playing characters on TV, and then in real life, it's just Chris Pat and Charlie Day doing normal voices. So it's fine. Well, yeah, it that, comes that, off it was fine. Chris, I don't know if... if I don't know if this is a negative or whatever, but I felt like it was just Chris Pratt's voice. Like it was fine. Yeah. yeah, it was fine. That's it was most voice acting, like, though, to be fair. Like, a big voice actors, they're not there doing impressions. They're there doing their work. I thought, that, yeah. I thought also, that's why um, people criticized it initially. Like, he's casting. Was well, it, because just, it, they didn't it, just, it just literally sounded like shit is why people criticized it. <laughs> yeah. it like, when he, got, when he got to Mushroom Kingdom, he's like... Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. He like also like didn't, super bored or whatever. He didn't save funny. himself in interviews either because they interviewed him and he's like, I remember when I was a kid stomping Goombas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like he, <laughs> di he didn't help it, you know? <laughs> um, well, you just know somebody they... read him a PR statement earlier, like, okay, here's your line, <laughs> this is what you have to say, and he couldn't remember it. Maybe yeah. the teleprompter yeah. was off. Yeah. Um, they also either redubbed it or used a different take when he's in the cart on Rainbow Road and goes, Wahoo! They actually used one where he has, like, energy. So they, they seem to fix it. You know, the, the voice acting in the movie was fine. I never had a problem with it. Yeah, it wasn't, like, bad or anything. No, not at all. Totally serviceable. Yeah, pretty, pretty, That's... uh, pretty dark for a kid's movie, too. Yeah, when Bowser puts the shotgun in his mouth after <laughs> Peach leaves him. Well, there's <laughs> literally nuts. there's literally like a Beastie character Boy who spends playing. the entire movie begging for death. <laughs> Did you guys yeah, forget that? Yeah, I got a bit old to me. No, yeah, yeah. No? I, yeah. I didn't forget it. Yeah. But me and my girlfriend were like looking at each other like, what the fuck? This is a kid's movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking Did about the standard. sweet release of death. Be, if you've ever seen like in your childhood the Tom and Jerry cartoon said used to be an episodic thing. Just I think it used to be much more fun. That's also not like unique to the Mario movie. That's very much like a Gen Z humor thing too about like true death. It's good. Yeah, that kind of life thing, is hard. That it. means I just want to die. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, it's Didn't funny. Nihilism. <laughs> Didn't get my Happy Meal toy. Gonna kill myself now. You know what? You know what the funniest meme format ever is. The most original and always funny. It's when someone says a statement where it's like, oh, the fastest runner gets to die, and it cuts to another picture of, like, someone running at a bullet train speed or something, and it says, this is me. Ha ha ha. Funny. I, I, I don't know that meme, but then you gotta get off an eye gag, Andrew. <laughs> you spent too much time on that, man. I don't know how you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. Yeah, I've, never, I've just never seen that before, to be honest. Me You're either. a meme connoisseur. I'm an expert. This is like Reddit or... T uh, Twitter, I see it a lot. Huh. Yeah. Only fucking meme I see on Twitter now is that still that stupid motherfucker paid for Twitter blue thing. So boring. Mm -hmm. Um. So what yeah. else happened this week? Did you guys see the Dalai Lama having a Tom Brady yeah. moment with a young boy? Yeah, I thought we were going to lead <laughs> off with that. 
I thought that's what the, uh, the topic was well, going like to be. Uh, Mario it? is way more important than that, Jackson. Come on. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down for the Dalai Lama. What's he like? What's his deal? How did he? How did he uh, get into the business? Spir- he just, spiritual he is... enlightenment, I believe. No, he's the leader of the so Tibetan like monks. To... He is picked by reincarnation, basically. It's like the whole Avatar deal. You know how the Avatar is like based on these people, essentially. His name even is, I think, like Tenzin Gyatso, who just sounds straight out of the Avatar universe. So that's Sam. And I guess he was at some kind of conference or convention of some sorts. Yeah, yeah. Was a boy from event. the audience. Yeah, the boy kissing event. convention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nambla event. Young boy walks up to him, <laughs> yeah. and apparently the Dalai Lama says, okay, give me a peck on the cheek, and the boy does, and then he says, give me a peck on the lips, and the boy does, and then the Dalai Lama is recorded and heard saying, okay, now suck on my tongue, and he sticks his tongue out at the boy, <laughs> and this was caught on camera. Um, for which well, he's is that how the reincarnation works? Was he choosing the next reincarnated oh, Dalai Lama? He's tasting Lama? his successor. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta that suck it out from my tongue. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the whole thing was recorded. So it's on his Twitter account. It's just the first thing there. But uh, he, uh, the boy apparently wanted a hug from him. So he called him up to oh, give yeah. him a hug. And then he... For more than he bargained for. Yeah, and then he <laughs> went for yeah. the, the kiss on the lips. So he like... Uh, pushes the the little boy's head up to like meet his lips and then just plants plants a wet one on him and then he's like and suck my tongue and he sticks his tongue out and puts it right in the kid's fucking face it was How outrageous up was they, the kid wanted a hug and the Dalai Lama just went for second base just like hey can I invite <laughs> myself in for some coffee <laughs> um, yeah. he tweeted out well his team I assume a video clip has yeah, been circulating he, the, the that shows a recent so meeting Uh, That shows a recent meeting when a young boy asked His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, if he could give him a hug. His Holiness wishes to apologize to the boy and his family, as well as his many friends across the world for the hurt his words may have caused. His Holiness often teases people he meets in an innocent and playful way, even in public and before cameras. He regrets the incident. Is uh, a tongue-kissing little boy teasing now? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> very mean. the The apology spe- specifies uh, the hug, but they don't mention the tongue sucking at all, which I found pretty funny. That was a that was a masterful dodge. <laughs> they just didn't mention it, which makes well, did sense. Did he get his tongue sucked? Like, did so, the boy actually lean in for the French well, no, kiss, or he, did his parents step it in? Was, it was just a request. Well, it, it was wasn't a request. Request. it wasn't a request. He put his, he put his tongue in his face and held it there for a minute, and the boy like was like <laughs> trembling, like he leaned in, but then didn't actually suck his tongue. Well, but no, he this held is it an there. actual. Twitter likes to get up in arms about like power imbalances between like celeb like uh, micro celebrities and like their fans or whatever. This is like a legitimate power imbalance. I know this is like their, one. it's his holiness. This is their spiritual leader. Kid. Imagine if yeah. yeah, imagine if like Jesus, Jesus came, came up to you and said. Suck on my tongue. <laughs> lick my nipples. <laughs> well, Jesus, I don't, I don't know. You but... bet I'm licking those nipples. There's nothing I can do about that. I ain't going to hell. <laughs> I don't want to be reincarnated as a cockroach. Okay, Dalai Lama, sir. Your holiness, give me <laughs> yeah, your tongue. It's so... Slobber on me. It's so fucked. <laughs> now, I have I have seen a bit of a kerfuffle online uh, from the, his holiness's supporters, I assume, or, I don't know, Twitter pedophiles about how this was uh, acceptable. I, yeah. I see a lot of people making apologies, well, not apologies, like making uh, the rationale behind his decisions or whatever, like, you know, rationalizing it. They say that, like, he's just an old man and he's just joking around. You guys are too serious or whatever. Yep. Mm. It's, so uh, the only thing I've seen really trying to justify how we got to this point is apparently sticking your <laughs> tongue out at people was a traditional Tibetan greeting. Yeah, sticking I mean, your okay, tongue out is like a thing. Yeah. It's a playful thing, but sucking on it's not. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's where I'm drawing a blank on trying to find why he would do that. <laughs> <laughs> so the only the only thing in my brain really. The only thing in my brain I can think of how this could maybe be a misunderstanding is if we Pull the old, he's really old card and just said something really 
senile and stupid. Well, he didn't. He didn't just say it though. Like he stuck his tongue in that boy's face. Like, what if that boy sucked his tongue? Like he, he held it there for long <laughs> enough, and the kid like leaned in, like very scared and reluctant. But like, and if he had held it there longer, just... the kid might have actually sucked his tongue. And the old excuse isn't good enough. Get rid of him then. Fucking reincarnate him again. <laughs> right? I mean, if he's that <laughs> old now, like another one. <laughs> he, if he's so old, he cannot tell the difference between like a playful gesture and like mouth fucking little kids now, or tongue fucking them at least, then get rid of him. This is the Joe Biden excuse when he goes around sniffing little girls and they go, well, he's just senile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> That's not an excuse. But do that. I, I can't but understand. I, I, Sorry, go. I just keep thinking about the fucking ice cream thing. To be honest, yeah. like I, I haven't forgot the goddamn ice cream moment. Oh Son god, I this very well might be another the kids sit on my lap and stroke my leg hairs moment. <laughs> you know, just a just a much more extreme. Well, version. No, it's well, much, I think it's, this one's worse. It's so much worse because he kisses this that is, boy yeah. on the lips and then puts his tongue in his face, telling him to suck it. Like at no, least Joe is, Biden is, is just like they lo- they rubbed my leg hair and I loved it. <laughs> like oh, at yeah, least without he didn't, a like, doubt, this is worse. This yeah, he is didn't for invite sure the kids worse. up there to start yeah. rubbing his legs. Well, at least the Dalai Lama apologized. power. Hmm? Well, no, he didn't. He, he was really did. apology. I, well, I guess what I mean is he didn't go around on a tour with a microphone going, yeah, the children sucked my tongue, they all liked it. You know, giving these weird <laughs> fucking speeches. <laughs> maybe, maybe he should, re- like, embrace his power and be like, I'm the fucking Dalai Lama. They can suck my tongue and I have ultimate power. You can't stop me. What power does the... Dalai Lama actually have? <laughs> no like, fucking it, idea. I'm not sure, but just, can you imagine the power move if he actually... Just, if you actually just didn't do that, <laughs> like just yeah, yeah you can all it. suck my fucking tongue, assholes. Yeah, <laughs> his final <laughs> act before he dies again. Jackson, he's not an actual Airbender. That's a cartoon. The real life person is just a spiritual <laughs> leader. <laughs> yeah, I was worried for our lives. Uh, upon thinking about that, maybe we shouldn't criticize the Dalai Lama. This is how he declares war on all other countries now. How long <laughs> has he been around for? Uh, he's born in 1930s, I think. 30s or 40s. He's very he's old. 87 he's 87 like years old. I think. Yeah. 87 makes so, sense. Uh, so, has, so you said that um, Dalai Lama is like chosen for reincarnation. So was he the Dalai Lama immediately upon being birthed? Were they like, you're no, the they Dalai select, Lama they go, through the, they go through the selection process and shit. I think he was selected before he was even five. And he's like the 13th Wait, how reincarnation. How do you select reincarnate, reincarnations? Like... It, it's probably a quiz chance, isn't it? No, they like, literally like show them like quiz. shit from his previous life and have give him choices and if he makes the choices that he would have made in a previous life if he like picks the same toys and shit i think that's how they select yeah. them i mean i assume it's entirely yeah. made up it's complete a- bullshittery and it's just a bunch of it's the people who actually call the shots selecting people but or do i know I, well, i'm pretty yeah. sure china has said that hey uh the next dalai lama we get to pick him so <laughs> there's some strife there now <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. That's pretty convenient. What if Xi Jinping is the next Dalai Lama? Oh, what a coincidence that would be. I hope somebody deepfakes Xi Jinping into uh, the Winnie the Pooh horror movie. I hope that as a funny prank, they say the next Dalai Lama is a pickle. And they say he turned himself into a pickle. (laughs) They make lots of merch of it. What a fucking (laughs) reference. (laughs) Isn't that a great joke? <laughs> I do like hey, that. What happened one. to that guy, Justin Roiland? Didn't he come out and like say he was exonerated or something? What's the he update? Was, yeah. yeah. So the uh, case was dismissed. So uh, the domestic abuse, the false imprisonment stuff has been dropped against him. But uh, Adult Swim and all of them haven't taken him back because apparently, like, all the workers still don't like him for it reasons also... outside of the. It, it also does not uh, validate him against the text that he would send fans. Yeah, it's or in uh, general, it, right? it was just the domestic abuse claims, right? Wait, yeah, but so was he a, still was he was he acquitted or did she just drop the charges? The, dro- they, the charges were dropped. Yeah, so they they uh, ruled that there wasn't enough evidence to rule beyond a shadow of a doubt that this event happened. So yeah, so he, the prosecution uh, basically dropped the case then, right? He claimed in his statement as yeah. well that she was trying to capitalize on his fame and trying to take him down 
and he was like oh it's not true it's all bullshit but it still doesn't provide an explanation for why he would text underage fans and be like hey your tits grow bigger haha <laughs> but what if oh, it was her texting real, fans on his behalf she's incriminating him even further mm, the long con she knew he'd get oh, really no. famous I still don't know if those texts were real. The Skype conversations, they were too on the nose. Yeah, I mean... Mm. Yeah, we still... Don't, I, those haven't been no. fully... Yeah, they haven't been fully confirmed, but the, the workers, like his co-workers and stuff, still don't want to work with him because he was apparently not good to work with. So but that he is, hasn't had his job being, back. Being a, being a bit uh, difficult to work with doesn't necessarily mean your entire life should be, like, ruined. Well, no, of course I guess. not. What? No, yeah. absolutely not. I was just yeah. saying also that's why he hasn't on... got his job back. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Also, there's like two types of being difficult to work with. One is an actual like asshole actor, but the other is like, um, what's a Superman actor's name again? Henry Cavill. Yeah, that guy. Where like Netflix producers were bitching about him because he cared too much about Warhammer or whatever the fuck or uh, The Witcher. And the they Witcher. were complaining behind yeah. the scenes. It's like a... <laughs> Some, sometimes, like, being, you know, passionate about your work and disagreeing with other people in the workplace counts as being too difficult to work with, basically. <sighs> Which is crazy. some people. And sometimes people just don't like you. It, it's nothing you're doing. It's just your personality, and you can't change it. So Justin Roiland, <sighs> being who he is, Andrew. might have very easily rubbed people the wrong way. You know what you can't change to, Andrew, is your body. Isn't that right? Oh, I'm so glad that you went the same place I was thinking. Because I was thinking about FitBod and the fact that we are four months into the new year. And if you out there still Summer's haven't coming. figured out your fitness routine, well, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you procrastinating? What are you thinking? It's not too late. It's never too late to get into fitness and FitBod is what's going to help you get there. It is an app that is changing the game of fitness. It will create a workout program that's personalized to your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It will learn from your previous workout and adapt them as you improve. You can make your fitness goals today with a 25% off offer on a FitBod subscription. <clears throat> oh, that was my throat, which I need to work out and train like all of my muscle groups and FitBod will help me do it with over 1400 HD demonstration videos for the workout. A full year of FitBod is less than a single session with a personal trainer and the gains that you will feel will last you a lifetime. If you don't have a fitness plan right now, or you want to try some new options for the one that you're doing, FitBod is the perfect choice. Keep up your fitness habit with a personalized workout program from FitBod. Get 25% off of your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash official. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash official. But be careful with your large, huge muscles you might get into bed too aggressively and destroy your mattress. Just snap it in half, fucking rip it apart with your bare hands. But that would only happen if you weren't using a Helix sleep mattress because Helix mattresses are quality and they're comfortability, something about comfort and the ability to be <laughs> so. You know where I was going with that. How long have you had your mattress, gentlemen? Because let me tell you, many people out there they do two things with their sleep. They don't replace their mattress often enough and they don't get a nice enough mattress. Someone once gave to me the sage wisdom of, you spend a third of your life sleeping. Why would you ever skimp out on what you sleep on? Why are you sleeping on these cheap, terrible mattresses that destroy your back? No, 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 no. You should know that a Helix is going to be there to support you however you need because they also have 14 different unique mattresses including luxury models, big and tall models, and mattresses made just for kids. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it yourself in your own home, so they also offer a 100 night trial and a 10 to 15 year warranty to try it out. And if one day you wake up from, let's face it, the best sleep you will ever get and say, oh, I just don't want this because I hate nice things that are really comfortable and make me happy. Well, you can send it back if that's your fucking protocol, you weirdo. Oh boy, 
Helix Sleep gets me so excited that I just want to mention <laughs> that Helix is offering 20% off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash official. This is their best offer yet, and it will not last long. 20% off... <clears throat> excuse me, I'm super phlegmy. 20% off of all mattress orders and two pillows for our listeners. With Helix, better sleep starts now. helixsleep.com slash official. Thank you, Thank you, Helix Sleep. All right, wait, wait, wait. I forget. Uh, Dalai Lama, but we can move on. Well, Is there anything else to add to? to? Oh, yeah. So, no, 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 no. Uh, does the Dalai Lama actually oh, face wait. any con no. consequences for this? Justin We're talking Roy about Justin Roy. Roy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's like, kind of like the Dalai Lama. Yeah, he's like the Dalai Lama of cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they're the same I just, guy i don't know what gives the dalai lama the confidence to do that do the things that he did in in real life like it has to be worse behind the scenes right that's what most people are saying yeah i mean yeah, yeah. well hopefully hopefully he faces the consequences and is put in dalai lama prison whatever that is or something. I don't know who has the right or the uh, privilege of being able to do that. Probably no one. Cockroach reincarnation, um, I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> Someone said locked out of reincarnating. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he gets like a time out of the reincarnation. Just dies permanently. Um, <laughs> I had a question for you guys. This is just, I was just thinking about this throughout the ad for some reason. Who out of the four of us do you think each of you know the most about? Huh? The, uh, uh, what was that question? Who? It was hard to like ask all of you at the same time, but like each of you must feel like you know the most about one of us, right? In, in particular. So who like, do we, I? Yeah. Who, like who do we know best is what you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good way of putting it. Okay. Who do you <clears throat> think you know the best? I, I'm interested in in hearing your answers. Probably Charlie. Yeah, probably Andrew. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hey, that, was, that was good. <laughs> I'm glad we got some agreement there. Kaya, what about you? Uh, I don't think I know, like, a lot about any of you. Men aren't really, like, nosy or talk. I guess I know a lot about your opinions. Not a lot, but some, I, I suppose. More than others. We Who talk. are you saying that to, me? You, yeah. We talk in Discord DMs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all do, but yeah. I think... I don't know what your like, birthday throughout is the show, or anything like that. Yeah, but. that's that's, <laughs> that's what I, I was actually thinking. For some reason, throughout the, uh, throughout the ad, I was like, I wonder what the guy's eye colors are. <laughs> and I was like, why don't I know that? And then it sort of let me down this. Do you, Andrew, do you think you know Charlie's eye color? Uh, they're like brown, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, done. Uh, all right, now the inverse, Charlie. His eyes are brown, brownish green. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lighter yeah. brown. Jackson's yeah. eyes oh, are blue. N not even close. <laughs> Damn it! What the fuck? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what about what about Kaya's then? Oh, his are brown. Yeah, I mean, I'm on camera, so it's kind of cheating, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson, were you going somewhere with this? Was there an idea here? No, I mean that, that was the idea. I was just curious. I was making conversation. What color are your fucking eyes, Jackson? I thought they were blue. No, no. Why would they be blue? You, you have blonde hair. I assume, I thought you had blue eyes. I don't have blonde hair. What are you talking about? You have like really light brown hair. It's like sandy brown. Yeah. Yeah. So why, why does that mean I have <laughs> I, figured, I, I thought you had like light colored eyes to go with it. I don't know. It seemed right in my head. You you don't know my fucking hair color or anything. What the fuck? That's not true at all. <laughs> what color is my hair, Jackson? Uh, fucking black. I, nope, it's I, not. I don't know. What are you it's, it's literally not. <laughs> my hair color is brown. It's brown then. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. You don't it's know my the hair. same color. Well, and your hair is... is like the same color as like a dirty blonde. <laughs> Oh, well, Sandy Blonde. Let's get the name right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs>
That was a great topic, right. Jackson. Yeah, it was cool, Jackson. Yeah, I, I like to go there. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, that was the goal. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you guys continue on. I'll just listen. Uh, <laughs> are you embarrassed now? No, not you embarrassed. Don't want to talk anymore. Kind of hurt. Oh, Aww. Jackson. Jackson. No one knows my eye color. Would it make you feel better if we talk about all of the cool Star Wars stuff right around the corner? I actually don't know anything about that. Wait, like really? I haven't seen anything. Yeah, what's happening? Oh, they have like so much shit coming out. But have you watched any? How? Of the... I-, I couldn't tell you how. But have you watched any of the Mandalorian season three? I was just no, about to I ask have... about that. I was just I about to ask about that. Clips. Yeah. So the yeah. Mandalorian. Fill me in, Charlie. The Mandalorian. From what I've gathered from other people, I haven't watched any of it. But back when season one was happening, everyone was like, wow, Star Wars is good again. This is really intense and excellent. And now season three is like the worst fucking thing in the world. Uh, so I haven't even watched season three. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've just been seeing the clips and reading a little bit about it. Uh, season one and two of Mandalorian, though, are fire. Like, I really do like seasons. Yeah, one they and have two. But uh, season... I'll tell, you, I'll tell you where it all went wrong. It went went wrong with uh, the Book of Boba Fett and the Obi-Wan TV series. Oh, Both of God, those yeah. were so fucking bad, and now it's like bled into the Mandalorian so for how some come It's almost like they do yeah. it out of spite. About why season three specifically, what made them flip a switch and go, okay, we're gonna hire like Jack Black and... Is that Lizzo? Yeah, Lizzo. Yeah. And, I, and they I, both I, suck. I really don't know. Have really bad writing. Name appeal? I don't know. I guess, but I, they, I, suck. Yeah, I, they suck as actors. I have no idea. Oh, wow. Hey, 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 Jack, Jack Black's it's, a good actor. Well, Jack Star Wars is yeah. isn't about, like, generally Star Wars, current Star Wars, like, what Disney is producing isn't about good writing. It's about member berries and, yeah. like, getting as many eyes on it as possible through things that don't have anything to do with the actual artistry of what's happening. Other than Andor. Andor is fantastic, but that's, like, also... I know it's not about good low writing, viewership. but... Come on, like the clip that I saw was just Lizzo saying a bunch of random sci-fi words. Did you see the clip where she's playing space croquet or whatever, where she like throws a beanbag no. through some yeah, hoops and, gr- and Grogu forces it through? <laughs> oh, she, she's like playing space cornhole. I haven't seen that. So just yeah. the scene where some old geezer is talking to her and Jack Black. And Jack Black is like, yeah, she- I am so disappointed. <laughs> and then Lizzo goes, ah, oh, this is just like Quark Flakar telling me about the Spunk Bagar. <laughs> It looks like they yeah, just in Orland found a new up. job, uh, but <laughs> it was like space cornhole, and uh, Grogu, for some reason, like helps using the Force. So she like throws the little ball through these tiny little hoops, and Grogu's like levitating it through everything. It's like a really triumphant scene for some reason. I don't know the significance of that little game she played, but it was such a wacky scene. I don't understand how it looks so fucking cheap they have to be throwing money at these these projects but they all turn out to look so cheap i don't understand that either especially with like you know how they even got rid of green screens and they use i forget what it's called but they basically use like gigantic led screens behind the actors now to set up the scenes yeah 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 you guys know what i'm talking about like they almost they pretty much like perfected it for the mandalorian i remember them bragging about how the technology evolved for that show specifically and yet, now somehow it all looks worse. All the Marvel movies look ass. All the Mandalorian shit looks ass. I don't understand how. I don't how did get the it CGI either. I, you, I, I think it's really just uh, overworking VFX departments because now that, like, instead of mm. doing, like, one movie a year or something, they're doing, like, 12 episodes of one show a year and then another yeah. show and then another show and then another the, um, show. The work cycle is probably just not yeah. there. They just don't have enough time just and they're given too much to do. Yeah. And also the budget for the shows is probably significantly less than the movies, I would assume. No, but even still, the first season of The Mandalorian looked great. So I, I really think it is just this constant demand on them and they can't do their best work anymore. Very possible. Yeah. Very possible. It, it looked like... It's possible. You know when Jack Black was in the Spider-Man parody for, like, the MTV Awards or something? For the first Spider-Man movie? They had a parody with him? Anybody remember this? No, anyway, I don't know. My point is about. that this Mandalorian clip, it looked like a SNL skit. Especially because Jack Black is there, it just felt like a parody. 
not an actual show that you're supposed to be taking serious. Yeah, no, no that's 100% true. It, it really feels so weird to see all of that. I've been debating watching season three just to actually get the full context of it, but I just can't motivate myself to watch it. I really... I'm so done on Star Wars, yeah. man. I'm like, I'm just done. Like, it's it's not even interesting at all. They to broke me anymore, Jackson, which is finally. <laughs> yeah, but, what do you mean finally? I've been kind of like on the decline ever since uh, like probably ep episode eight, right? I think that was like the decline Jesus, of interest for me. There's that many... Is anyone here, um, okay, here's evidence that, uh, I'll give this to the comment section, this W, here's evidence that I'm the dumbest person on this show by far. <laughs> I actually watched the entire Saw series. Has anyone here seen all nine movies? Yes, I, I've i seen like seven of them. There's okay, probably I'm a couple I'm still the bigger idiot not. then. The worst fucking fr horror franchise ever. And the that thing that actually shocked me was in the last one, which is called Spiral. They have Kevin Hart and Samuel L. Jackson. For no mm -hmm. fucking reason. They have these... A comedian who cannot act. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure Kevin Hart is great, but he cannot act. And it's just kind of comical that he... Oh, sorry. Chris Rock, not Kevin Hart. Chris Rock is there and he cannot act. It's just fucking goofy as hell. But it's also the worst franchise ever. And I, I don't know how these movies still get greenlit. I was wondering if we maybe we could make a Saw movie and have it. Well, they list. make because they make a they shitload money. of money and they're super cheap no. to film. Yeah, they're very cheap. They to make. are. Yeah, they apparently Saw is the most profitable horror franchise ever. Apparently, it is. It is. Even it is occasionally worse than in the, the last. It's occasionally in the top one hundred highest grossing franchises of all time, I believe, depending on like the return year. What the fuck made you watch the Saw franchise? I remembered the first one being like kinda okay. The, first I don't want to spoil it in case anyone haven't se hasn't seen it. But the twist at the end, kind of, I still think that's kind of a cool twist uh, at the yeah. very end. Yeah. The first two are genuinely good movies. The first two are what? actually good. Yeah, and then well, wait, it just goes for downhill. Soul. Can you spoil it for me? What What is the twist? I mean, okay, to be well, fair, this is like a twenty-year-old movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell yeah, me. I guess, just suck it. Well, at the end. Skip 30 seconds forward if you haven't seen it. The bad guy turns out to be the guy, the dead man lying in the middle of the room that you watch the whole time and you assume he's just dead. And he gets up at the end and he says, it was me uh, the whole time behind everything. And you realize, oh, all of the people that I thought were prank. the bad guy were just the pawns. It was a cool twist and the music was fitting. It was great. But then every movie gets worse and worse and every movie contradicts the one previously. I think in the second movie... John Kramer, the bad guy, the main, like, Saw guy, Jigsaw, he says something like, I detest murderers. I hate I've murder. never killed anyone. Yeah. I would never murder someone. I detest them. Because in his head, if you, if he, like, puts a shotgun to your head and he says, you know, uh, cut off your own dick and eat it, and you don't, and he shoots you in the face, that's not murder <laughs> somehow. That's not murder. And he, suicide. Now, Kaya, <laughs> I want to blow your mind here with some movie analysis. You might not have considered this, but John Kramer is the bad guy. I know, but the annoying part is that, like, in the first two movies, you kind of sort of... It's retarded. It's wrong. You are, obviously are a murderer, but you kind of sort of can give him that... Whatever. Okay, he's insane, mm -hmm. or he's snapped. But then, the, in the, like, following movies, they just continue to literally murder innocent people i think in the sixth one six or seven yeah. there is a wife of one of the victims where even the jigsaw puppet says she knows nothing about your misdeeds she's completely innocent and then she gets cooked alive to death <laughs> for no fucking reason yeah, so, <laughs> so the the first two movies i i think are genuinely good they're great bottle movies they're very good low budget movies they're great twist detective thriller movies i like both of them but what you're describing is what a lot of the fan base agrees with the third movie on is when they get shitty and it's because it's when things stop becoming fair and start just becoming ways to torture and kill people. Like there is a, there's a trap in three where a guy is being drowned in like a pig cesspool. Like he's grinding up pigs and flooding yeah, a room yeah. with them. And it's like his whole life is in the hands of another dude who has to do something. And it's like, if he just goes, nah, fuck this. I don't want to do it. He's just dead. That's not fair. Whereas in one and two, as far as I remember, every single trap is you have to do this to save your life or you're fucked. You know what I'm saying? 
And then as it goes on, it just becomes, oh, how the fuck do I beat this? This is bullshit. No way. Fuck that. I will, uh, I, bef I'd like to chime in here. I haven't seen all of them, but Andrew, the one you and I saw in theaters was a fucking <laughs> stinky one. Like, it wasn't- yeah, it was, That was, uh, well, that was, was Jigsaw. Saw? Jigsaw. Yeah. Jigsaw. Jigsaw. Oh, Jigsaw in the theater. So yeah. Is Jigsaw the one where there was a scene where they, uh, kill off a bunch of supposed Nazis or was that the no, previous No, that's movie? the one with the There's Lincoln a scene Park with the guy from Lincoln it. Park. Yes. Yeah. And it's so fucking moralizing. You hear oh, the jigsaw voice going, scene, yeah. you have judged people for the color of their skin, but now you will learn that deep down we are all red. Bro, go. Yeah, it's and so it's like, funny. Oh, what the fuck is a moral lesson here? I may be a serial killer, but at least I'm not racist. Fuck you. <laughs> it, just yeah. people. <laughs> it, it really loses the plot after the first two. Once the third one and beyond, it just becomes like ways to goofily torture people. I, I actually unironically still do think about the ending to Jigsaw, though. Like everything, oh, in that yeah. movie, everything in that movie was pretty fucking stupid, but I will give them credit. I at no point thought that there was like some kind of like time play at work where we weren't seeing what was like actually right. like real where time. Where they did it twice. Yeah, yeah where they did it twice. Uh, that was kind of cool, but what I really like is the very last thing where it's that girl and that guy, both of them did bad things. He holds mm -hmm. up a shotgun shell and he's like, this is the key. And he loads it into the shotgun and the guy uh, shoots it, which blows his brains That's out. The and then it turns out... The, the key well, no, is just the in the shell. No, no, no. The, the, guy, the keys. Yeah. Yeah. So no, the girl it's a, shoots it's herself, shotgun. it blows up in her face, and so, the so keys they are, are that's right, in the shell. They are so monumentally stupid in those movies because Jigsaw. So the final two people in Jigsaw are chained together in a little room. And one of the guys got his foot cut off from another thing. So he's like, he's like pale and weak and he's like functionally useless. And Jigsaw shows them a shotgun shell and goes, this is the key. And he puts it in the shotgun. And the whole movie, all the Saw movies are to take a breath and think about what's happening and pause. And the whole Jigsaw movie has shown things are not what they seem. Just be careful. Think through what you're about to do. And she immediately grabs the gun and tries to shoot him. And it blows up and kills her. And then he finds out the key was in the shotgun and now it's disintegrated because of the gunshot explosion. And he's like, we could it's have been free. We could have been free. Yeah, if only we if only we stop to think about this fucking stupid word riddle as we're pumped with adrenaline and fearing for our lives. Like the dumbest fucking puzzle. Oh, they're tests. so stupid. Charlie, do you remember when the guy gets put in the giant blender? And he's being slowly yeah. lowered down. He's like, oh, 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 and then the girl jams it, giving him ample time to push the emergency stop at the bottom, which is his test. Yes. And instead he goes, yeah, I won. I'm the best. Woo and he does that for two minutes and then he dies. I don't remember that, actually. You don't honest. remember that? No. Oh, I think about that every jigsaw, day yeah. of my life. That was but the dumbest so dumb. trap, too. It looked so lame. I know. It was the, the Whirly Durly. It was a fucking theme park ride in a barn. Well, the, the one that I was th the, uh, about to bring up is um, in that movie. So it turns out there's another jigsaw, and it's like a previous victim of him who, like, mm -hmm. you know, f f agreed with his methods or whatever, which isn't unique to the franchise. I know they've done no. that before. No, but like, his yeah. was, his was, uh, he was playing in the first game. But the anesthetic never wore off in time, and they were all wearing these, like, bucket helmets that were attached to a chain leading to a saw that would cut them to pieces if they didn't free themselves. But he never woke up, so he immediately just gets hit by the saw, and then yep. Jigsaw fucking waddles on in there, he's like, holy shit, <laughs> yeah. this isn't fair, this Oops. isn't fair. So he, like, I, I he, remember his exact line, he says, Jigsaw didn't want someone to die for an innocent mistake. Yeah, <laughs> well, that was the guy. Yeah, yeah, like, what the <laughs> I don't yeah. even know if that. I mean, what mistake was he referring to? The fact that he overdosed the guy and he didn't wake up in time? Or the fact that that no, guy just made an me. innocent mistake? That guy was the one who mistook John Kramer's medical, like, CT scan and so delayed the diagnosis of the tumor but it's like he didn't even do it intentionally this is not a I bad know. person he just fucked why, up why put him in there to begin with also charlie you know what my favorite scene of that whole movie is because it's the dumbest goddamn thing on the planet hmm. there's a scene where the four of them are in a, a hang they got chains around their necks and it's about to hang them to death but they're given three uh needles and they have numbers on them a and jigsaw goes okay here's how the test works these numbers are significant to one of you uh, only one of them is the antidote to the poison I put in your bodies. Uh, one of them is water and the other one is acid. 
So like, find out what the number is, idiots, bye. And one of the people in the group immediately looks at them and goes, 1344. Oh, 1344. Oh, that's a, oh, 1344. And the rest of the group goes, did you say something? And she goes, no. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. And I then they start that. fumbling and flailing around and eventually it gets the woman killed who realized that 1344 is the amount of money she pickpocketed from someone who died because she stole her inhaler and she died of an asthma attack. But she literally sees the syringes and is told one of these numbers is important. And she goes, oh, that number's important. And everyone goes, syringe... what did you just say? And she goes, oh, nothing, nothing. I didn't You're say anything. You're just how dumb the syringe shit was too. So in the trap, for those who haven't seen this awful movie, they're given three syringes. One is the cure, one is acid, and one is basically just a placebo sugar water that doesn't do anything. And mm. they inject a woman with all three because they just couldn't pick in time. It's like, okay, it's acid. Just drip some on your hand and see if it burns. This is not yeah. difficult. They're just this very, very, very stupid. Those, so movies fucking dumb. Are, <laughs> those movies what are just fuck? full of people being incredibly fucking stupid. Just doing the stupidest shit. I don't, man. I need to. I need to rewatch it. I don't remember that syringe thing. I, like that. That's the stupidest fucking one ever. Yeah, you could just drip the yeah. acid on your hand, see if it burns, and then just take yep. both of the others. If one of them's a placebo, it won't hurt you anyway, so but, it doesn't matter. Wait, wait, but wait, you don't even have to go that to far. Yourself? Yeah, just smell it. Or something. You don't even yeah, have or to just go smell that it, drip far, it on something. She looks. She looks at it and explicitly goes, "Oh, that's the number. I know it is." And they all go, "What'd you say?" And she goes, "Nothing." Yeah, yeah there's like a million ways that this one's <laughs> fucking stupid. I don't remember she, it at all. Does she just get shy or something? What, what's what's up with that? I don't that? remember how it plays out. So, but so, I think so she's bad. too afraid to say anything, so she just doesn't. Also, after the first movie, because the first movie had a good twist, all of the others also try to have a good twist at the end, and they all suck. The yeah, twist is always. I, I, oh, yeah, I, I I think two's twist is very good as well. I like two's twist a lot. I, I might like it more me. than the first ones. What's the twist? I barely okay, remember. Okay, so it. so the first the second movie's twist I actually like almost. I would say more than the first movie, but it's debatable which one's better. So there's a detective who sits down with Jigsaw and he's like, "Dude, stop murdering people. Cut it the fuck out. I don't like it." And Jigsaw's like, "Oh, uh, well, yeah, I, I have remember. your son. I kidnapped your fucking son, idiot." And he's like, "Where's my son? Give me back my son." And Jigsaw goes, "Here's how it works. There's a timer on the wall, and it's set for what was it? Like 4 hours or something." And he's like, he's like, "If you can sit here and answer my questions and have this conversation for that amount of time, I'll give you your son back, and he'll be fine." And the detective is watching these closed security cameras that Jigsaw has. And it's his son in a group saw game. They have to get through the, like this mansion with a bunch of traps in it. And he's like, I have to find where my son is. I have to go rescue those people. Where are they? Where are they? And Jigsaw's like, hey, if you talk to me for all four hours, then I'll tell you where they are and your son will be fine. Don't worry about it. But the detective, through all the clues, talking to Jigsaw gets all antsy. And with like 30 minutes to go or something, like like a small amount of time, like 10 minutes, he's like, I figured it out. I know where they are. I d interrogated him. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And they all leave and they get to the mansion and it turns out that it's empty. They had already done the Saw game. They were watching a recording and uh, at the actual interrogation site, a vault opens and his son is in there with an oxygen mask. It's and literally Jigsaw's a like, safe oh, and could have had him. Jigsaw Jigsaw said, look, if you just talk to me for four hours, you'll find your son in a safe place. And then the yeah. safe opens at the end. That's the <laughs> I twist. I forgot about that. But <laughs> my point was more so all the following movies are like so desperate for a twist that everyone in, the, in this franchise just ends up turning out to be an apprentice of Jigsaw, of John Kramer. Yeah, everybody is I've in heard. on the fucking murders now. Everyone's an accomplice. It's annoying. But the greatest sin... Uh, this franchise has done so you guys know the iconic voice right that i want to play a mm -hmm. game yeah mm -hmm. which is with that this. music as well that, quick. that music is so this good play a game. there is only one key to open the device so you get that voice right for eight movies and then spiral happens okay and when i first heard this i thought i accidentally downloaded a parody copy some sort of a porn parody of saw but this is now the serial killer's <laughs> voice in the last saw movie hello detective boswick i want to play a game the green train is arriving in two minutes it is up to you to decide if this will be your final stop you have taken the witness. <laughs> 
Yeah. Are they fucking <laughs> going to out of their way. mind? No way. No That's fucking that is way. Real. That is real. I didn't make that up. That is from that. the movie Spiral with Chris Rock. And it Samuel sounds Jackson. like uh, it sounds like the Riddler from the fucking the Batman trying to be intimidating and cool. It sounds like a Brexit like YouTuber. Like a yeah, no, it actually just sounds like me making a silly voice. <laughs> because they took a man and they pitched his voice up for some reason instead of pitching it down to make it deep and cool. Oh, it's I, I, yeah, I don't understand this choice. That's like trope 101. When you want a creepy serial killer voice, you yeah, pitch it down, down to make it really bassy and deep. They it's scary. Did, did, was this jigsaw like an amateur? Did he like slip on the dial or something and like this, crank it up? Yeah, this was like a copycat killer that, that's okay. the other thing john kramer actually dies in the third or fourth movie or something and then it's just a bunch of his apprentices <laughs> yeah. and one of the copycats that's the funny he thing dies, too man he dies but they in the cast third him in movie. like six more movies yeah, yeah. But he dies in the third movie and they keep going for like six or seven movies it's so dumb and they're making a tenth they're currently making saw x which is apparently coming out in october yeah, they That's make exciting. a shitload of money and they're super cheap to make, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get one every single year. I I still love fucking like awful franchises. I just recently finished all the Twilight movies. I I love it. I love that kind of shit. Oh, I do Saw next. Did you, did you finally get up to? Well, clearly you did. But like uh, the the baby imprinting part. Yep. Yep. Oh yep. man, so good. Oh, Charlie, we never talked about that. You know that giant fight at the end of the final movie never happens in the books i heard yeah so they made that yep. whole thing up and then they still didn't commit to it they used it was just a dream, a dream. which is yep. crazy so i have a friend who is very very into twilight unironically and i remember hearing all about that when that movie came out in theaters and just she went on a tirade describing everything that was and wasn't in the books and that whole just entire climactic movie moment never happens just did she all like made the up. movies uh, this was a long time ago. This was like when they were coming out. So I think, I think it was more just kind of, I'm a Twilight fan. I'm going to watch them kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I don't remember if we talked about these on the mains, but I watched another Harry Potter. Yeah, where are you I watched up to? the sixth one. Uh, so the last one we just watched was Half-Blood Prince. That's a good one. No, it's not. I it like is that the one worst one. one by far. I told you, Which Andrew, one? that this was like one of Charlie's favorites. I like no, that one. Too. It's, it's not my favorite. Br Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite. Well, Prisoner like of Azkaban is one of your favorites. Yeah, one of yeah. Your Prisoner of Azkaban is good. Half Blood Prince as a movie is fucking like terrible. Absolutely terrible. Right. Fine. The, um, yeah. So spoilers. Spoilers for Harry Potter for the up to the sixth movie. Uh, Charlie, I want to ask you a question, because you liked it. Wha who is the Half-Blood Prince? Snape. Why? I don't remember why, but he's... They don't explain it in the movie. Is it... They literally don't. I haven't seen it in a long well, time. Wait, so, is it the, up, is the, the end of the sixth half movie... Blood? Is it in the title? They, they don't explain it? No, they don't explain it. They explain it in the book. They never once mention why in the movie. At all. So, at the end of the sixth movie, Snape has killed Dumbledore, and he's fucking off with Voldemort's crew, and Harry's chasing after him, and he's like, Fight back! Fight me, you fucking coward! And Snape attacks him, and as he's lying stunned on the ground, he goes, By the way, Mr. Potter, I'm the Half-Blood Prince. And then he walks away, and that is all we ever know. We don't know what it means, we don't know why he's that, we don't know anything. That's all that comes off of that in the yeah, movie. Wait, what is what is the Half Blood Prince again? What what is that title? They mean? don't tell that's, you. That's just his title. It's the potion thing, no, right? it's, it it means something specific, but they only talk about it in the books. Is it wasn't it wasn't he like signing the title in like a potion book or something about how so, to make something specific? From from skimming on Reddit and this and that, it's because his uh, father or mother was a Muggle. But well, yeah, the I know other that, parent was a wizard. Yeah, he's a half blood. It, I get that, but like, why, yeah. why does that come up in the half blood prince? Isn't it from a book about, uh, like, a, a dude's like so, really oh, good at oh, potions oh, oh, in, oh. in the movie? He's he's in potion class, and he needs to borrow a textbook, and he borrows yeah. a used one, and it says this book is property of the half blood prince. Yeah, and there's like a yeah. it's like a cheat sheet of all the potions or some shit. Right, it's, and yeah. what's funny is it prince. never comes up in the movie either. Yep. <laughs> he <laughs> uses it in the beginning to make potions, and then for the rest of the movie, it's romance and unrelated drama amongst the three characters. I still yeah, think so it's well done though. Like uh, the whole reveal with Snape actually 
actually being kind of like Harry's protector, him being there the night yeah. that Lily and James were killed. I thought all of that was really well they done. They don't, well, that's not the sixth movie. What? I, they didn't say that at all. That's in Half Blood Prince. What? Yeah. No. I what do you that mean? Was the last I didn't one see that. Snape. Yeah, that's the what? seventh movie. Am I getting the mix up? You're talking about Snape. You might be. Um, yeah, and I think I'll, you're you know what? I'll Snape tell you why. I'll tell you. I'll tell Dumbledore. you why you're getting it mixed up. I'll tell you why you're getting it mixed up. Uh, did you think Voldemort was in the sixth movie, Charlie? Well, I'm looking this up right now. Because he's uh, not. Voldemort never once shows up in the sixth movie at all. Am I getting it mixed up? Yeah. What did you say, Charlie? What what scene are you talking about? That's isn't that the one where they finally show Snape's motivation through the um, no the where they like go through his memories with the yeah with I think whatever that is the last Patronus. movie that's. Yeah, he's confronting Dumbledore, and Dumbledore says, since when, and Snape says something like, the whole time, or all this time, or since forever. Well, wait, but oh, the, sixth movie, the sixth movie, Jesus, the sixth movie is when Snape kills Dumbledore. Yeah, he, kills, he, <laughs> yes. he, he kills Dumbledore in Half-Blood Prince, but I, I thought they also talked about his motivation in that one, I completely misremembered, yeah. No, I don't think so. No, yeah, I don't think so. They, so they another didn't. another dumb thing that happens that I, I looked up online to see the difference because I just couldn't believe how stupid it was. In the movie, Harry is hiding under the floorboards and Dumbledore is about to be killed and Draco is chosen to do it. And he's like, I can't. Uh, uh, and Snape steps in and he's like, well, OK, I have to do it because of like some honor code thing. But the whole time, Harry's just standing in hiding, doing nothing, when he could have, like, I don't know, done a flashbang spell or some stupefies or done anything, which is what Harry would do. He would try. He wouldn't just stay there. In the book, he's trapped under the invisibility cloak. There's, there's something that happens that, like, pins him down under the cloak so he can't get up. He can't he has get to out watch. of a blanket? Is he a cat? Well, I, I, <laughs> 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 yeah, he's a small child. It's a weighted blanket. It was heavy. Um, but either way, there's a reason that he can't. I, I don't. I didn't read the books. I just read Reddit and shit after on the movies, like reviews. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in the movie, he just kind of stands there, like dumb, and is like just doing nothing. And the whole plot in the book, they talk about Voldemort and his origins and his motivations and all the shit. Whereas in Half Blood Prince, yeah, you get like flashbacks of stuff, but the majority of the movie is Ron and Hermione love triangle. But that's what fans wanted. I know, and it's, it's ugh, it just sucks. It's just boring. It's just a very boring movie. Also, there was no color in it whatsoever. It was like a Wait, black and white movie. Yeah, it's like all those final movies really from what I remember. Yeah, they, they color graded it to just be like totally flat, completely. It looked like a Gears of War game. It was just all brown. Well, there was also coming out at the same time as the Twilight movies, which had the same uh, oh, fuck. color Those grading. Are so good. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good. I think it was like a, a product of the time. Like a lot of movies that were coming out around that time had that very mm -hmm. similar like, bluish kind of co color grading. Like uh, what's the, that Mission they Impossible still do movie it. that came out at that time has that same uh, color grading. It's really Wait, which one? Uh, fuck, it's... is it Ghost? No. Is it Don't four? you dare What's slander four? Ghost Protocol. That's no, it's not. Protocol. It's the one before that. It's not. It's the one before that. Three? It's just Mission Impossible 3. Isn't the one with, uh, Seymour yeah. Hoffman? Yeah. yeah. It could just be called yeah, Mission Impossible 3. It while. is just Mission Impossible 3. Yeah. It's the one by, It's the one by fucking J.J. Abrams, so it's the length flares out the asshole. Hmm. Well, I was gonna say, they still do that today. It was like... That's why they people dunk on Disney a lot these days, because they keep remaking these cartoon movies into live action, and the color grading is so depressing and flat and boring. Yeah. Just dark. Yeah, I don't know that why. Was, yeah, that, was the, uh, that was the sixth movie in a nutshell. It was all just dark and dreary and... Like, I get that it's trying to be more serious, but half the time you couldn't fucking see what was happening. It was just so <laughs> dark and indecipherable. Yeah. Um, it takes a bit of the magic out of it, but it also like you're dealing with like Voldemort and shit. So I, I think it. But you're not. Be well, yeah, not in this one. He doesn't. Sure. Voldemort himself does not show up in the sixth movie whatsoever. He right, only shows tone, up as Tom Riddle in flashbacks. The tone is more depressing as well, though. Like Voldemort is a bigger threat at this time. Like he's talked about more or whatever. Like mm. they're taking that 
aspect seriously, even if he's not showing up. And then there's a the whole Dumbledore dying shit and yeah, there's uh, that there's a also Prince. There's also that whole weird cave scene with Dumbledore, where if you haven't read the book, you have no fucking idea what's going on. Where they're looking for the for the fucking uh, what's the thing? The the piece of his soul. Horcrux. Horcrux. The Horcrux. Horcrux. Yeah. Like you have an you have an idea of what their mission is, but just where they are, what's going on is so they're weird. Talking about the scene where Dumbledore is like in a little boat with someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a lot of fire, dude. That scene looks cool though. Well, like the whole that ceiling is, cool is engulfed in fire. It's a it's a cool scene, but it was just confusing. Like I'm like, who are the what are these creatures? What are they doing? Why is it here? What's going on? You guys remember? I don't know why this jogged my memory of this movie. I haven't seen it in fucking fifteen years now. The series of unfortunate events movie with Jim Carrey. Yeah. No, but I want to yeah. watch it. It wasn't yeah. good. I I remember liking it as a kid, but that scene with Dumbledore and the the fire, the cave, and all that. I don't know why, but anytime I think of it, it fucking reminds me of that. There's a scene in series of unfortunate events that I at least vaguely recall being somewhat similar. I remember liking I that movie, it. but I was also like ten. Yeah, it's just it's just not just wasn't. Just didn't do it. And it's a shame because so the fourth one was also stinky. But the fifth one was way better. I I had I had optimism because I thought they were going back in the right direction, because I actually enjoyed the fifth one. Yeah, dude. And the sixth one was just a fucking slog of just, ugh. You've only got two left. I hate two the left? ending for what it's worth, so I'm very curious <laughs> to see what you think about it. Well, it's, it's, so the last two are part seven, part one, and part seven, two, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Deathly okay. Hollows part one and Deathly Hollows part two. I don't know why I said part seven, part one, and part two. It's Because <laughs> I forgot what they were called. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's not, the ending isn't as bad as, like, other franchises, actually. I nah, feel like I think they it's did shit. It. I mean, it's not, it's not like fucking Ron imprinted on Harry's baby or anything. So well, like, yeah, but now you're comparing it bad. to Twilight. Like, <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there should just... be a scene where Ron grabs Harry's face and he envisions an entire battle that lasts 20 minutes and then doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they convince Voldemort not to fight by showing him the future where he loses. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Charlie, would you rather rewatch every Twilight or every Harry Potter? Every Twilight, they were so fucking fun. <laughs> they what also you... went by so quick. Mm. Yeah, they don't really overstay their welcome, which is good. How many are there? Yeah. Three? Five. 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 Yeah. Jesus. Uh. Yeah, they yeah. did that thing where the fourth song, movie is split in two. And they oh. actually, they had to make sure to play baseball as well. Yeah. <laughs> God, that vampire baseball scene. Ugh. Everything about that those films are so fucking good, man. I'm such a fan. They are they are something else. If All we right, want do... to um talk on a property where I am positive and not just shitting on something, that's a Finally. pleasant surprise. Yeah. So it's earlier we were talking anime. about No. no. <laughs> Shockingly. <laughs> um so earlier we were talking about Star Wars and how Mandalorian's just going down the tubes. Something in a similar vein that surprised me at how good it is. Have you guys seen Peacemaker? Yeah, Peacemaker was good. No. I liked Peacemaker. It's great. It's it's really good. It, it's not formulatic Marvel. It's actually funny. I'm on episode three or four, and it I'm really enjoying it. It's actually well, it's really a good. Marvel thing. Yep. It is, but it doesn't feel like a Marvel thing. It no, feels no, no, DC. it's DC. Or, Oh, it is DC. You're right. You're right. But it, it's, even it, feels, more surprising. Uh, it feels like the Deadpool movies where it's like in that wheelhouse, but it's kind of its own thing. And I, I think it's doing a really good job. It's a good show. It's got good reviews. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I liked it's, it. it's great. John Cena fucking kills it. He is so good in it. He's his acting is just so comical. It's great. Right. Neat. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Uh, do you like anime, Andrew? Depending on the anime, yeah. Have you have you watched Attack on Titan? <laughs> uh, are we bringing this back up? I don't know. What, what do you mean? I'm All just right. asking. Were you what? there for that bonus when Charlie asked me about Attack on Titan? Oh, I actually don't remember thing. you. I don't remember <laughs> this you. This whole thing. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring this up. It's it's fine. I just we had a whole thing on it. anyway. Um, so I watched the first season of Attack on Titan when it came out. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that was fine. And then I read the manga. 
and I got to where the manga had like was at the time and I said I, d I don't feel like continuing on so when new issues came out I just kind of didn't care so that's as far as I've gotten I haven't seen all of it but I've seen the beginning are you gonna watch the anime I want to because uh I really wasn't blown away by it I thought it was fine like it was yeah it was good but according to Charlie and many other people, it just turns into a masterpiece. Yeah, I'm throwing my, my hat in that ring. Uh, I was just kind of the same with you for the first two seasons. I was like, yeah, I can see the appeal, but it's nothing like groundbreaking or anything. At least in terms of media, maybe an anime, but like in terms of media, it's not like anything groundbreaking. But then season mm -hmm. three and now four, I think uh, like they excel beyond their medium, really. Wow. Like they're, they're just... Their masterpieces of like storytelling. They're so yeah. they're so fun. I'm so and glad so you good. went around and gave it another chance, Jackson. I knew you'd really like that show. Damn. Yeah, I, will, I mean, like uh, I said, the first two seasons yeah. are good. Like, I, they they're good. I, I don't have any issues with them. I enjoyed them, but like three and four are like next level. I'll probably have to give it another shot. It sounds like I'd enjoy it if it's it... a big it's a big investment. Like, there's a lot of episodes and That's it takes fine. a while, yeah. but like, yeah, it's worth it definitely. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I, I left it initially back then with the impression of, like, it was kind of a little s too slow-paced for my liking. Like, it was really interesting and overall good, but it just felt like things took a while to happen. Yeah, but it, it does, but it kind of feels less offensive to me than other animes where they just do the same conversation mm -hmm. over and over again. It feels less slow to me than those, like, because, like, yeah, some characters in Attack on Titan kind of do the whole like flanderization thing where they they've, they speak their the same emotions constantly but mm -hmm. that does eventually change as well so i don't know it's 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 all good i i really like it I, Best anime. I you have convinced me you and charlie have convinced me i will give it another shot i'll add it to my list i'll throw it on at what some about you point. kaya are you gonna watch it mm, probably not uh, well. <laughs> all right that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was honest are you gonna watch peacemaker i know you love no. uh superhero stuff <laughs> <laughs> no he i mean watch, i can look he it's doesn't not, watch not... it like that but he watches saw why'd you watch i know that's what i was gonna say i'm like trying to sound stuff. haughty Duh. about it the garbage that i watch isn't any better but i just i don't know well, Attack on Titan that's not my kind of garbage <laughs> well Back to yeah, what sure, that, you, you never answered what made what actually motivated you to watch saw you said just because you remembered the first one being good so you're like fuck it i'll watch all eight I was, movies nine yes movies. i was i was just curious like where, where's this going what's happening with this fucking franchise why is there nine of them why is the 10th one being made and i just sat there and fucking watched them on the side not like actively engaged eating popcorn i was just doing stuff on my computer and had it on a second that's monitor that's the right way to do it yeah yeah it's Oh, I, Why don't you do that with a Typhoon Titan? I was though. forced to watch them, but... Why don't you don't do that know. with um, good things? Well, because good things require my active attention, and I don't want to give active attention to an anime. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want to give my active attention to a good thing. Alright, Jackson, that is that is a question, though. And, and I guess for Charlie as well. Did you guys watch it dubbed or subbed? I watched it oh, subbed. I, okay. Yeah, Jackson, I same? Dub. No dub. Uh, Okay, is the dub good, would you say? I mean, I'm not an like anime fan usually. Like, I don't watch a lot of anime, so I don't really have a standard for okay. for what's good, but I think it's good. So, so. I, I typically watch stuff when I'm eating, and I have realized now that reading subtitles while I'm trying to eat is the fucking yeah. worst thing ever. So I've been watching nearly every anime dub just for convenience. People are such snobs about the sub thing too yeah, when you're watching it. Yeah, Especially I hate when... the whole sub dub yeah. bit. I like to watch my Korean soap operas, as you guys know, with like the goofiest <laughs> Netflix Korean sci-fi shows, which I just call a Korean life action anime. And I watch them dubbed because it, A, it makes it funnier, and two, I just don't care enough to read subtitles. And why should I? Like, why should I watch Attack on Titan <laughs> with subtitles so i can hear the original japanese when the girl is squealing about her potatoes that she likes to eat who gives a fuck that was the best decision for me when i watched squid game dubbed because the old man sounded like uh the old guy from kung pao the whole time oh. 
<laughs> it's great. I think just on the whole, subs usually just sound better. Like, uh, I don't know, the Japanese voice actors well, just yeah, give a much more better. like inspired mm-hmm. performance. I get well, it that. Definitely sure. like lines up more. Yeah. I think there are also series that absolutely like really gain a lot when you watch them in the original. For example, JoJo's. Yeah. You know, oh, when yeah. you're watching JoJo's, one of the quirks of one of the characters is cursing in English. So when they're speaking Japanese and something happens and he goes, holy shit, it's like funny and jarring. Whereas in English, when they're all speaking English and then he just curses, it's not nearly as interesting, you know? Yeah. 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 So I I get it. I, I totally get the debate. I just to me, if the dub is good enough. If it works, if it's solid, I'd rather watch it dub so I don't have to read subtitles. The dub, the dub for Attack on Titan is definitely good enough. Okay, I think that's it's fine. great, but I don't want to like I don't know, speak out. No, nah, good enough is good enough for me. It doesn't have yeah. to be like amazing as long as it's as long as it's not like old school anime dubbing where it's just really bad acting and doesn't fit at all. No, no, no. You no, know, no. these are professional yeah. voice actors and stuff that do oh, a yeah, then, really good job. Then that's fine. That's totally fine. Matthew Mercer's in it. I know that. Oh. What about Chris Pratt? What about Troy Baker, the man in everything ever? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think he's in it. Sadly. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I actually God. haven't seen him in a lot recently. It's been too long without the Troy Baker fix, to be honest. I got my huge fix. He's the uh, main villain in Death Stranding. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. That's right. You played through Death Stranding. (laughs) And I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It just fucking hurts me to hear you say that, honestly. (laughs) Why? You love the turn. These guys are going to get fucked over. I absolutely hate that gameplay. I still think it is the (laughs) most boring gameplay of all time. Andrew, you like the gameplay. I loved everything. I loved literally every minute I spent in it. So you're not changing your mind, though. You still love the story oh yeah yeah yeah. no i liked everything else uh, aside from the gameplay yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. i i I understand that i would never play that game again ever i respect that argument i i totally understand and respect it i i don't agree like i i loved it but i understand it you know i I get it yeah i i i'm with charlie i hate the gameplay i hate it but i admire it to some degree like i I don't admire it at all i I fucking loathe it. I hate everything they did with that gameplay. There was not a single yeah, moment where I experienced an I- iota of happiness. Well, it was admirable it. taking like a, a risk and designing something so fucking stupid. It's like it's an opposite of a risk, lives. though. It, it's literally like the opposite of a risk. It is literally just making the most boring idea ever. Like taking the worst part of a, like a world, which is like slowly traversing it, and making that your core gameplay loop. That's not a fucking risk. That's insanity. It is a risk. But the, the level of detail and thought behind it is genuinely impressive. You uh, yeah, tripping just, when you have a, a heavy load. That's not yeah, at all. You, yeah, okay. That's you not at just all. don't respect the dopamine rush you get I when you're it. leaning slightly to the left and you have to hold right right trigger to correct your balance God, you just don't get it. it i hate it I hate the adrenaline russian gameplay game of walking while copyrighted <laughs> music is playing that which should <laughs> life is strange basically but you're ups man oh man good old low roar nothing beats them the music was good the music, the music was I, great the music was good yeah yeah i i think that yeah the gameplay is an argument back and forth on whether it's even good yes agree there's a lot of debate there but i think the world the character design the story direction all that stuff you you can't argue against like it was fucking phenomenal it was super super good i agree it's a very unique very cool world but uh and i will never ever ever touch that game again (laughs) (laughs) oh man and just the star power as well like all those fucking celebrities in that game it was fucking nuts oh yeah jeff keely uh (laughs) junji ito uh, who are the other cameos? Conan O'Brien. <laughs> oh yeah, Conan. Yeah, yeah. Conan's in it. Like all these weird celebrity cameos. <laughs> so, Charlie, are you going? Are you going to play Death Stranding two? Right. Of course. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to play it. Yeah. Would you I have same. preferred? Looking back, would you have preferred to just watch a like cinematic? Yes. Yeah, video of. I think of the I think game. I said that in the moist meter, right? Where like I, I said I the know. best experience for Death Stranding is just watching all the cutscenes. Like that. That is so how, how about um? So how why about do you do that with playing two? Yeah, watch it. 
well, no, I'm going to give the game a chance. Like, maybe it's more fun. Like, maybe he changes things up. Though I really you feel like he will. <laughs> no, I really think he's going to double down yeah. on it, and it's going to be even yep. more of the worst part. So even, like, the most tedious part of the already established Death Stranding <laughs> formula, like, now you're going to be even yeah. more off balance and shit. Like, it's just going to be so awful. I think he's going to make the, the same exact game, but with a world twice the size. And that's it. That's the only change. Well, it did. Yeah, Kai just said, why, why not just give him a movie? It's because he, he doesn't want to do just a movie. He's a visionary. God damn it, so, he's a game designer. Die so Hardman, God so damn it. You, you joke, Jackson, and yet there are parts of the Kojima experience that only work in games. You got to remember, this is the guy who created the most memorable PlayStation moment of all time, where Psycho Mantis reads your memory card while you're playing Metal Ooh. Gear. Nothing like that had been done before that, and it only works in a video game. Yeah. So what did yeah. he do in Death Stranding that was similar? Uh, the, <laughs> it, it, it's put you to sleep. sleep. Sometimes. It's, yeah. it's yeah. probably the fact that all the players inhabit the same world, so you can use other people's gear at all times. Yeah, he invented multiplayer, but not really. So what, what he did, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. It's definitely marketing speak, but what he basically did is, you know when you're playing Dark Souls or Elden Ring, and you walk over and you see a message, and it's like, don't give up, or, oh, yeah. secret passage here. In Death Stranding, instead of that, you get actual things from people. You get vehicles and gear and constructs and all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. That's, and I, that's the game. Which is crazy because pretty much at no point throughout my playthrough did I ever stand to benefit from anyone else's <laughs> shit. Meanwhile, I made an entire goddamn zipline network that could take you from one side to the other. And I already know I saved so many people the tedium that I went through. So fuck Oh, em. dude, I, I built every road because oh, it was Jesus. important to me. I loved it. And every time I booted up the game after I did that, I just get thousands and thousands and thousands of likes without doing anything. Because I knew people were using it. That's actually pretty, That's you're a swell guy for that, that's Andrew. <laughs> that is cute. I loved it. I enjoyed my time from start to finish. It just felt like a meditative experience. I thought it was amazing. It's, it's fu fucking awful. I hate that gameplay. Oh. <laughs> Wait, speaking of games, <laughs> yeah. I just saw this tab on my screen that I wanted to talk about. Can't go an episode without talking about AI, I'm sorry, but <laughs> have you guys seen this paper where um, they gave 25 AI agents motivations and memory and put them in a simulated town? Not only did they engage in complex behavior, including throwing a Valentine's Day party, but the actions were rated more human than the humans role-playing. This is so cute. This is what I want in my future games. I want AI... Eight like NPCs that throw each other Valentine's Day parties and birthday parties, but more realistically than we have now, and like Animal <laughs> Crossing and shit. Yeah. That would be so cute. There's a lot of theory crafting. Gate. I think you posted similar stuff, but there's a lot of theory crafting on using AI NPCs for infinite quest generation. That's interesting. Oh, that's a cool infinite idea. Dialogue. Yeah. I think it's a cool idea. Imagine you're playing a game, you're playing a big action RPG or an MMO or whatever, and you meet a guy. And he's like, oh, I need ingredients to bake bread and I'll give you some bread. I just yeah. want to. And you go get it and you come back and he makes you the bread and he goes, oh, wait, but now my uncle's in town and we should go see him. Can you escort me to him? And it's like, imagine obviously more exciting examples, but imagine that happens forever. You have a character who essentially has an actual digital life and you can interact with them through Their personality. It. Yeah, I, I think. Sorry. Hmm? Oh, go ahead. Oh, are you done? I was just going to say, I think what AI brings to the table in that specific regard is like it can uh, create consistency with character as well as quality. We kind of already mm -hmm. have what you were just talking about in the form of um, what's it what's it called? Uh, the fucking Bethesda shit, the the radiant quests and shit like that. What are they called? Procedural procedural quests. Like stuff that's just invented yeah. uh, programmatically. Yeah. That already exists. It's just not very It does, but know, this fun. is just so much more advanced, obviously. If any of you have ever talked to like an AI at this point in 2023, it is that's so much I mean, better yeah. than the, you know, even thousands of lines of pre-written dialogue that you get in a Bioware game with the NPCs that you can romance. It's great, but it's just, this opens up so many possibilities. This is going to be so awesome when like you're playing Baldur's Gate or Neverwinter Nights or whatever, and you slaughter a whole town and... It's like lifelike despair in their eyes rather than a pre-written line going, oh no, you killed my children. <laughs> this of is course, that's what you want. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's anything. It's about, going to be... let me... 
just screaming so about let us out of the game, please. Turn so it the, up. Impressive, <laughs> the impressive the part of this is yeah. and goes meta. The impressive part Please of this is Alicia save. save. <laughs> yeah. I want my family End back. our misery. I'm an actual <laughs> real human. I'm not digital. Please, I'm alive. And I think this is also going to lead to a different kind of difficulty in games, which I think will be very funny once game journalists start crying about it. Because right now we have like Dark Souls games, right? Where the bosses are difficult, but at the end of the day, they all have like pre-programmed patterns that they use. But imagine giving a boss character an actual human-like intelligence, like you're squaring off with an eSport player. Oh, that'd be so fucking cool. Holy that'd shit. be yeah, like fucked, it, yeah. It's tactics adapt to what you're doing, basically. Like, it learns from you and how to yeah. count you. And maybe it can even oh, yeah, cheese the game. Awesome. Learn to use, you know, wall hacks and shit like you. <laughs> like, hiding behind a rock where you <laughs> can't hit it. <laughs> what I would love is... um. It, the context it provides for immersion so when you're playing like let's say rpgs today and you meet an npc and they're like hey buddy uh you got a nickname i can call you that and you'll like type in a text box and it'll just fill in the text box into pre-recorded shit like oh hey it's cool guy good to see you oh welcome back cool guy imagine though if it could understand what you gave it and create things from that. So like, what yeah. if you like, hey, give me a cool nickname and you call it yourself like Weapon Master and he reads it and it'll be like, oh, you're looking for weapons? Go to the blacksmith, Mr. Weapon Master or, or something yeah, to agree. that degree I where you have that, actual that was, conversations. That was, that was lame, but like, yeah, like- <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Jackson, Jesus. <laughs> it's an example. That was me. If you could just input- That was if you input, if you could That was, input that was me, Jesus, fuck, Jackson. Well, yeah, I, I think that's just a- like a cool way example. of describing this. Like if you could input, if you could input any like response to what they're saying, oh, and then points. have them that like is organically finally going to continue. Yeah. bring an end to yeah, the Bioware bullshit. Where like an NPC will talk to you for five minutes, and then you get like one of two replies, which is "fuck you, die" or "I'm sorry, I'm a cuck." <laughs> it's like so <laughs> aggravating. If if they would actually allow you to talk back to the things, that would be such an improvement. Yeah, it has a yeah. it has a flag programmed into the AI, and it's like, oh, all they have to do is mention this or like hint at doing this, oh, yeah. and then the quest is complete. But you can do it a million ways, you know. Like like think about think about it this way: you you go on a quest to pick up like those fucking bread making ingredients that I mentioned earlier, and you bring it back, and the guy says, oh, did you bring my bread? And they just open a text box. And you type whatever you want, but as long as the AI recognizes that you say, yes, I brought your bread in some capacity, they'll have a conversation. You can literally be like, yeah, I did, fuck face. What are you going to do about it? And they start a fight. Or you can be like, you oh, like I did, but I'm keeping it. And then they're like, hey, you can't do that. That's mine, etc. Like, that'd be amazing. It, yeah. That like, is like, talk your incredible. way out of situations. Yeah, and such. Maybe, yeah. Like, convince the bouncer to let you into the club or whatever the gameplay oh, is. Oh, my God. And I, I think, think in the future, like dialogue responses, writing. responses, though, need. Sorry, I think all their responses need to be consistent with like their character, though. Like, of course, yeah, that's what of I was going to say. I think in the future, instead of writing the actual lines for characters, they're simply the character writers are going to write who the character is, and give it the AI and yeah. tell it the AI to stick to it. Okay, you're a bouncer. This is the player. You're rough around the edges. You're mean, but you also have a kind heart, and you like cats. Oh, you also Kaya. smuggle drugs. I think you just convinced me of the greatest game I haven't played yet that I want to play. You're locked in jail, and using just an open text box, you have to convince the guard to let you out. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Ooh, that Imagine, kinda cool. you're playing an RPG, and that's just one of the levels of the whole world. That's, the, the potential here is enormous. Yeah, I, I love that I'm so idea. excited. This is one of the very few times where I like actually feel envy for young kids being born who are gonna get to play all these fancy ass <laughs> games yeah i hope i'm gonna be around long well, enough to actually witness this stuff to be fair though those stupid stupid children probably watched the mario movie and didn't get half the references we did because they're fucking dumb <laughs> yeah they probably, they probably didn't even know it was losers. beastie boys playing <laughs> yeah they probably thought aha's take on me was from mario and asked what game it was in <laughs> idiots yeah stupid <laughs> All right, it's, let's wrap. Charlie, I saw you disconnect. Did you lose audio? No, 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 no. The call for some reason just got muted, so I just fixed it. Oh, by wait, before we, before we wrap, Jackson, uh, we got a voicemail for you. Well, for you and me about something that you and I are a little touchy about. 
Uh, sure. No, good. I don't want to hear What's it. up, official podcast boys? I'm uh, recording this at 1.30 a.m. after seeing John Wick 4. That shit fucking slapped. It was very good, and it left me needing more fucking blood, carnage, and viscera. I'm coming to take it out here. Uh, not on any of you boys. You're all cool. On the fucking pussies on Patreon comments and Reddit posts, who made fun of the name Podophiles. Fuck all of you. We were getting more new content, and you fucking losers had to go and ruin it for everyone by bitching about how the name sounded like. You know, it was a pun. Fuck all of you. You ruined shit. Uh, Jackson and Kaya, please bring back Podophiles. That shit was going to go hard. You guys, you had something good there. Don't. Don't take any of that feedback to heart. Fucking hashtag podophile acceptance. <laughs> hashtag love for podophiles. Hashtag Jackson and Kaya are the best podophiles. All right. Thanks, boys. Very, uh, fuck, very again, sweet. fuck all those oh, uh, still going. motherfuckers on Reddit who complained about that shit. Fuck all you. I hope John Wick uh, takes you out in Minecraft. Uh, all right. Bye. Thank you for the call. Hashtag that was like, podophile acceptance. Yeah, that was like a really like wholesome spirited uh, uh, rally for the podophiles. Passionate cry for it, yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We, should, we should stop to be I, ashamed of the name Jackson. I am so fucking sick of it already. Like, I th I love that name. I, I don't understand. Well, I do understand where people are coming from, but it's a fucking pun. Like, come on. <laughs> so good. It oh, really is. I, I said from pun. the get-go, it's a fucking banger. It's a, it's a I good like name. It. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, well, it's if you have more succinct. messages like that, call 404-913-3858. Yeah, yeah, that's a good reminder that you can go watch the first two episodes of Potophiles. It's out there. <laughs> Just look up Potophiles. Do you guys want to, at any point, tell people what the show is? I don't think you nah, ever nah, have nah. on air. No, nah, okay. fine. <laughs> no. Join the Patreon <laughs> to, to find out. It. <laughs> it's an open secret. <laughs> I remember, I remember I was so passionate and excited about Potophiles and it came out the first week and then Kaya got in some fucking internet beef with H3H3 and I checked the Reddit and it's like all the people on the H3 Reddit like, Kaya just made a podcast called Potophiles, what a fucking weirdo. So like, fucking God damn it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I Jackson, would you claim that you're a podophile? Just a huge, hard pod podophile? Yeah, you, were, you were close to that. <laughs> it's such a good thing. I account. can't unsee was somebody on Patreon left a comment saying, well, podo comes from podiat podiatrics or something. That means foot. So is this a foot fetishist podcast? <laughs> I looked at it like, Oh, it. podiatry. Podo yeah, podiatry. Yeah. There's so a many layers to it. That's what makes right. it great. That's feet. <laughs> podiatry is feet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Well, don't let it, it get for to this you, week's Jackson. episode. I won't. Um, yeah, thanks for listening to this week's episode. patreoncom slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. There's Potophile episodes up there as well. Uh, <laughs> bonus content out the wazoo. Go check it out. Uh, other than that, thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking mm -hmm. to you, or talking at you, really. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye everyone. Bye-bye.